Going rogue on you today. We're back at More Supply where we cut open these water heater tanks a few weeks ago to see the nasty stuff inside. Now on today's episode, we're gonna take a deep dive, a closer look and see what lessons we can learn. All right guys, so we're back at the water heater supplier and we cut these open a couple weeks ago, but you know, after we did that, I've had a chance to kind of mull over the results and think about what we could learn from these. So let's actually take a closer look at all four of these tanks and see what lessons we can learn. So let's start with the first one. This is the one that was the thumbnail on the other one where I said it was totally gross on the inside. This is the 2000 model. This is an electric one and you can see the electric coils right here but look at the amount of scale in the bottom of this thing. Absolutely gross. Now, of course, this isn't harmful to our health. It's not really gross in that we're gonna be harmed by drinking water maybe that came out of this. But think about how terribly inefficient this was. There was probably more scale even than this in here. And look at these anode rods here. They were probably totally covered in scale. How efficient do you think this tank was? I bet this thing probably used twice as much electricity as when it was brand new and clean in this state. Gosh, look at it, it's getting all over me. The other interesting thing about this one is now you can see what kind of insulation is being used on the tank. You've got a steel tank on the inside, steel tank on the outside. It looks like it's maybe, I don't know, somewhere between an eighth and a sixteenth thick here. And then there's a spray foam insulation. And the tank, you'll also notice, has a lot of this rusty color on the bottom. And in fact, before I stood it up, I saw some parts on this metal tank that looked pretty rusty. Now what's preventing that rust on the inside of a tank? It's this right here. This is the anode rod, and it looks to me like this might have been the original rod. We've got the bare wire showing, and a new rod is gonna look like this over here. Here's a brand new rod. So it went from this, a brand new rod, this happens to be aluminum, to this over the course of time, and my guess is this tank was never maintained. Obviously it was never flushed, and that anode rod never came out. Now it did last a long time, 17 years, Typically you think of a lifespan for a water heater tank is about 15 years. So this one fit right in that. But I think had this tank been flushed, had this been used in a softened, water softened system, boy, we could have gotten maybe more life out of it. And of course it would have worked way more efficiently. Okay, next tank. We're moving actually from the oldest to the newest. Now this model is a 2016. So this one's only two years old. I have no idea why, that got, why this one got replaced. If you look on the inside of this tank, the metal looks like it's in fantastic condition. I mean, it looks like it's in real good shape. And in fact, I wonder what this got coated with. It looks to me like it's almost a baked on finish on top of this metal. So the manufacturer did a real nice job preventing rust. Now we did have a little bit of scale in the bottom of this tank if you saw the other video. Most of it's gone now. I think it may have gotten rolled over but very little scale. If this one would have been flushed, I think we would have been in good shape. But the anode rod, look at this. See if you can zoom in here. I'm gonna use my flashlight. And where the anode rod screws in on the top, let's see if you can focus in on that. The anode rod down here looks good, but at the top where it connects, it looks like it would actually possibly fall off. Look at that. It's just hanging on with just a little bit I don't know, I think that this anode rod probably needs to get replaced on a water heater tank about every probably five to seven years. So if your tank at your house is seven years old or so, I would replace the rod, put a new rod in there. The one problem though with replacing rods, these just screw in on the top. In fact, you'll see a, a bolt head like this on the top of your water heater is you gotta pull that thing all the way out and look at the head height you would need on top of your water heater. If your water heater is in a closet, there's no way you're going to get that kind of head height. So you want to actually use one of these. It looks like a set of nunchucks. But what you've got here is one that's segmented. So you could drop it in in segments and stand that up. Now this one too is instead of aluminum, I believe this is magnesium. And they call these a flexible anode. I'll put a link to two of these in the description so you know what I'm talking about. My understanding is that these will actually last longer and do a better job as well. They are a little bit more expensive in the flexible variety. The other thing that was interesting about this tank was look at the wall thickness here. This wall thickness is quite a bit less thick than the last tank. Let's see if we can actually measure it. 
It's uh, just shy of an inch and a half. It's probably an inch and a quarter maybe in, uh, in insulation thickness. Now I looked up the specs on this. This one's pretty new. This is a 0.56 EF rating. And if you can scroll around, look at the uh, energy guide in the back here. I know it's gonna be a little hard to see, but check out the energy guide here. The most interesting thing, forget the numbers, this is a propane tank. I'm not necessarily interested in the exact numbers of how much it costs per year, but the energy guides do have a scale from least uh, amount of energy used to most amount. And this tank falls in the upper half. I have a feeling that that's a combination of insulation and burner efficiency. Now, keep that in mind. We're gonna look at another tank in a second here. Let's go to the next tank, which is also a gas tank. This one happens to be natural gas, not propane. But look at this immediate difference we're seeing in wall thickness. The other one, inch and a quarter, this one's two and a half. So double the thickness of the last tank. Now I looked up the EF rating on this one. This is a much older tank. This is a 2000 model, 2000 model year. So quite a bit older than that one. But this EF rating is a 0.65. So you know, 10% more efficient. I have a feeling it's that insulation that's, that's uh, making a better efficiency rating. Now the scale is different. Come on over here and, and check out the scale because you know, these scales are gonna change and it's based on water heaters of its time. But among water heaters sold in its day, look where that arrow is. You know, it's in, it's in the, uh, the first third of using least energy. I have a feeling that that's, that's vital when you're buying a water heater. Get one that's in the first third of the efficiency because you're gonna get this thicker wall. And as far as I could tell, looking at the specs on the manufacturer's pages, none of them showed the insulation value or thickness or any of that. And it's not like you can cut your water heater open at the store before you buy it. So that's a pretty interesting result. The other interesting thing about this one, you know, two years old, Look at the scale on this one. We had some scale on the walls on this one. If you saw the other video when we first cut it open, and in fact, there's some here on the flue. You can see it right here. I'm dulling my knife as I do this, but I wanted to show you how thick it was. I think that if we were to descale this once a year, run a hose to it once a year, really scale it down, and then also check out the anode rod on this one. Still kicking, although pretty corroded, and again, this one's pretty old. Now it's hard to tell if this is the original anode rod or replacement, but you know, my guess is this is probably the original based on this tank having a fair amount of scale on it. Replace that anode rod, maybe five to seven years, flush that tank once a year. I think you're gonna get a lot more life than the kind of 15 year standard out there. Okay, last tank let's look at. Electric is the last model. And again, look at the thickness on the insulation. Let's check this one out here. We've got inch and, inch and three quarter, something like that. And not that much scale on this one. The, both the burner elements are in good shape. Just a little bit of scale on the bottom. There's no rust in the tank, which is interesting. The sacrificial anode rod has been pretty degraded, but it's doing its job. And this one is a 2000, what is this, 2005? Yeah, 2005 electric. It's just a 13 year old tank, pretty old tank. I think that if this anode rod was replaced, again, every seven years or so, five to seven years, you might be able to get over 20 years from a tank like this, maybe even as much as 30 years. I'm not entirely certain why these are replaced. Again, this is just the boneyard. I'm here at uh, Moore Supply where I buy my water heaters. And it was kind of them to let me <laughs> cut these open in dramatic form. But here's the takeaways. Replace your anode rod, flush your tank, Look at those EF ratings and get one that's got a higher EF rating. Most of these kind of standard tanks uh, are going to be somewhere between uh, 0.5 some to maybe as much as 0.7 and the higher rating the better. Of course, I'm a big fan of the really high efficiency units and stay tuned for some future videos on those. But it's really interesting to cut these open and see how much scale and I'd be willing to bet that 99% of the water heaters out in the world never get maintained. So if you're watching this video, <laughs> maintain your unit. Drain it at least once a year and replace that anode rod. You're going to get way more life out of them than what standard 15 years should be. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.